How many of you have read Cradle to Cradle? Whoa. Thank you. Um, good. Well, I, I'll save this a lot of time that way. I'll be fast. I'm going to go really fast. So we've been working on this kind of thing for about 30 years. One of the things we saw in China when we introduced circular economy with the Chinese many years ago is they start by thinking it's all about recycling. And the question becomes quickly, if we're just recycling what we made yesterday and it was toxic, what are we doing? So I want to focus in on the details of what it means to be circular. And it's so wonderful to see what Ellen MacArthur was able to do with what we've just seen with biomimicry. This is all fabulous. I just want to focus on some of the details. The, the issue is retox. Retox. So what is that? Eco-efficiency is what happened after the Earth Summit. Let's be more efficient with everything. But what if we were doing the wrong thing? And we did it perfectly. Then we're perfectly wrong. Whoops. So the question becomes eco-effectiveness. How do I do the right thing as best I can? So that becomes a question. In a fundamental way, we look at this human economy we've just been hearing about, and we talk about goods and services. But wait a minute. What if we had bads and services? What if it wasn't goods, it was bads? Oh, and then we have a circular economy. Oh, and then we do it again. Hmm. Then the circular economy is not a good if it recirculates bads. So the question is, what is a good? And what is good behavior? Interesting, because what are we doing if we keep doing the wrong thing over and over again? Retox. So being less bad is not being good. It's being bad by definition, just less so. So the question becomes, what is the good? So that's really what I want to look at today. We're going to get really into it with some fun here. Now, the butterfly diagram you see as they point out at Ellen MacArthur is based on this, which is cradle to cradles, nutrient cycles, biological and technical. So when we're designing, we can say, am I designing for the biological, biological cycle metabolism or the technical metabolism? Meaning, is it, can it go back to soil safely? Can it be on my skin safely? Biological things. Technical things go back to industry ad infinitum. This is really the, the partition which we find very useful as we start to think about design. And it's great to see that it's being adopted globally and certainly by, uh, as it was, was pointed out today. I love that. So that's an important idea as we design. So, oops, am I going? So if being less bad is not being more good, but we want to be less bad, of course, we also want to be more good. What we can do, and the way we look at it this way, is what we call upcycling. You have an infinite number of choices. Some are good, some are bad. You decide that. That's a value de values decision. A value decision is less and more. A values decision is good and bad, right and wrong. Right? So what we can do is put these two on the same chart. And we can say, let's get rid of all the things we don't, because zero is a dignified goal for toxins, absolutely. But on the other hand, what if our goal is 100% fabulous? So we do both at the same time. So we get rid of the things we don't want, and we do it all the way to the molecule. We do it with cities, we do it with buildings. It's fun. But we can also go for the fabulous. So when we published uh, Cradle to Cradle in 2002, we followed that in China with the design of the circular economy in 2005. And then in, 19, in 2013, the upcycle. The idea that we can take things back, improve them, purify them, and then recirculate them, not just recycle, not just change use, but actually change quality and take out the things we don't want from the past and get, go forward again. This is going to become very important as we work on the plastics at a huge scale, which I'll talk about in a minute. The fundamental idea of Cradle to Cradle then was translated into a certification program, which is, it, uh, you know, some people think might be hard and hurts their head and has a lot of science in it. Yes, it does. But it's not that hard where you're about to see. And there are ways we can do it together. But it's five characteristics. And they're all a platform for the sustainable development goals, all 17. First is material health. And that's first, because we want goods. Second is circular economy, which is another good, an economic good. And the reason it's second is because we don't want to circulate things that aren't healthy. So safe, then circular. Third is renewable energy. Fourth, water stewardship. And fifth, social fairness. And so we have criteria, you know, three inches of science. Yes, it takes, it, can, it takes some time and requires some thought. But it gives you a very rich mix of how we might improve products in a lot of dimensions. And it takes on climate. It takes on water. It takes on society. Yes, all those things together. Let's think about how we do this. But as I listen to people working in this area, you keep hearing words like end of life. I want to make a quick point. 
that the issue I have with end of life is not that life cycle assessment has a problem, it's just that it's characterized on inanimate objects. So if we talk about the life cycle of this clicker, at end of life, it's not a living thing. My phone talks to me, but it's not alive. So what we really want to think, I think, say, in a circular economy would be end of use, not end of life. End of life is a projection of a, a human projection on an inanimate object. So if we say end of use, then it begs the question, well, what's the next use? And then you start designing for next use. That is the circular economy design assignment. So once you start to think about that, as we pointed out way back when, the first time in uh, Cathedral of Sh Shaun the Divine, I gave an S a, a sermon, the 100th anniversary sermon of the world's largest cathedral back a long time ago, 1993. I was younger then. Um, and it was called Design, Ecology, Ethics, and the Making of Things. And called for goods and services, as goods and services, but also goods as services. So we talked about carpet being available as a service. So essentially you're storing your raw materials on the customer's floors. And then you want them to be safe and healthy, and you're in relationship to that customer. And so this is really an important idea. And that moves to being a product as a service, which is now becoming something we talk about often. It's like looking at a thing like a washing machine, and as we said in the book, and saying, well, I want, to wash, I want to wash clothes. I don't necessarily need to own steel and glass and rubber. And all of a sudden, for the people who make these things, it's better to make them better, because then they're providing more reliable service, and they have less need to send somebody to service the service. And so all of a sudden, the financial transactions actually improve. And we store these assets as resources for the future, because these companies can use the indium and the gallium and the aluminum again, whereas all you wanted was the light. So the idea that Philips now sells light as a service was articulated then. And it's so great to see it all coming out now. Now, it works at all these different scales. It's designed for the circular economy. So there's a lot of science to it, which is nice, because it's been peer reviewed and it's there. Um, and we have a lot of different products now. We can put it in the public domain. It's independent, third party, across all sectors, biological, technical. And we also have fabrics. The first product I did other than the building was fabric for Steelcase Corporation. And we designed a fabric so safe you can eat it. It's now used in the Airbus 380, so if you find yourself in a, at 40,000 feet with extreme fiber deficiency, you can safely eat your chair. Uh, so it's a different world we live in. Um, we work with Steelcase, Herman Miller, on furniture designed for disassembly because you can take it apart, and when parts are marked, we can use them again. We designed Herman Miller's factory where they make the, guess what, the mirror chair and the Aeron chair, two cradle-to-cradle -cradle certified chairs, because after doing the factories, we moved to their products. It's really exciting. With Shaw Industries, we took our idea of product as a service, which we had introduced to the carpet industry, and, and then we're able to redesign for it. So the backing is thermoplastic polyolefin, the face fibers in Ireland 6, they can all be recycled mechanically or chemically and go back to being a service for the customers. And so carpets become carpets again. We store our raw materials on our customers' floors. Method has been doing cradle to cradle from the beginning. 95% of their products are cradle to cradle certified. We designed their factory in Chicago. It has the largest green, greenhouse on a building in the world. Isn't that fun? And it saves so much energy for the business. It provides food for the local people and more jobs because they have people working on growing food in a food desert that's healthy and safe for their children. In, in Amsterdam, we have a project with thousands of products and materials in there that are cradle to cradle certified, working with the industries there. It's been a lot of fun. And in China, I've been asked to work on concept pieces we've been doing. We're replacing some boilers, coal-fired boilers in, in Chinese cities with geothermal, things like that. But also, I was asked to look at what a, what a city that could feed and power itself would look like. And so we've been working on things like that. Recently, as, a, as part of the call for the issues of dealing with oceans and plastic waste, I've been working with scientists and various business people and technical people who have been doing this kind of work for a long time. And we're focusing on land and sea, like we all are and all should be. And as we heard, this exquisite exercise that was done by National Geographic to bring this to our attention uh, is so important. And so we have strategies for that. And we're looking at the year 2050. And we're developing protocols around getting 90% of plastic waste reduction by 2050 and what that would look like. So just to finish, the products that are now cradle-to-cradle -cradle certified get down to the molecule for safety and health. 
uh, L'Oreal, the largest personal care company in the world. Isn't that fun? This one I'm very favorite recently because it was just announced three weeks ago. Michelle Pfeiffer has just done the first fine fragrance that goes all the way to the molecule for transparency. The whole idea you can't do transparent fragrances is over. It is done. Let us proceed. So in this search for the good, as we get to fashion, we did fashion for good in Amsterdam with an uh, astonishing family and company. And what we did is translate cradle to cradle into these five goods so people could understand them. There they are, materials, economy, energy, water, lives. And we started looking at what do we mean if we could think this way? And so all of us could think this way together. And what, what would that look like if we actually made it real and visible? So we did that, and then we worked on how to get companies and, and products made using this protocol. And CNA, bless their hearts, the company, um, got it done and did the first Cradle to Cradle uh, gold t-shirts. Uh, beautiful. And at nine euros for this one and seven euros for a normal one, mass market pricing assessed down to the molecule. And then we did jeans, the iconic piece of clothing for the world. We said, let's do Cradle to Cradle jeans. These things are assessed to the molecule. Every single bit of it is organic cotton, and it meets all these criteria. We then took all that and the science and the lists of all the dyes, all the materials, all the finishes, and made them open source. So through Fashion for Good, all the textile people can get to all these materials now. And so there it is. It got done. So we ended up making a pair of blue jeans. So, uh, so there's a picture of a model. I thought we'd get some other models here. Thank you.